Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk about cloud computing and AWS and basically why you should learn it, why you should care about it. The, the point of this entire video is to just give you guys a primer on the subject because I'm planning to make a playlist or like a series on different AWS services and I, I figured that I should probably start with like kind of the basics of what it is because cloud computing in of in itself there's like a lot of questions around that usually at least the people who are not familiar with it so <clears throat> let's start with like the why why should you even like care about cloud computing or, or AWS for that matter it, it's it's hard to really like prove to you guys that it's so important but here I, I did some research Here's like a Forbes magazine. So let's take a look. Just from the like title, 83% of enterprise workloads will be in the cloud by 2020. And also like currently AWS is like the number one leading cloud service provider. So if you're looking for like a good way to improve your resume, you know, get that, like get into that first job, getting in like certified in AWS or um, Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure, like those certifications are really valuable right now. In my opinion, like if you're going into like full stack development or so, then learning cloud computing and being very comfortable around like AWS, for example, will be probably the most marketable skill that you have. So it's it's almost like no brainer if you want to you know improve your resume and just work at the work with like cutting edge technology. It definitely makes sense to learn about cloud computing. Now, what exactly is cloud computing? Let's take a look at Amazon's like documentation on what they describe as cloud computing. Cloud computing is the on-demand delivery of compute power, database storage, applications, and other IT resources through a cloud service platform via the internet with the pay-as-you-go pricing. Okay, so that's kind of like a long-winded, like, what does that even mean? Like, it, you know, if you don't know anything about like um, kind of like how to scale websites and things like that, then this this frame this documentation really won't help you out that much. So let's try this instead. Let me try to like give you guys kind of like a scenario to work through. And essentially, I'm describing the problem that AWS is solving, and like these other cloud computing platforms are solving. So let's say that you created like a super cool like cat meme generator website right you click a button and it generates a new meme and you got it to run locally meaning just it works on your laptop for example and then you register a domain etc and now <clears throat> people from around the world can consume your awesome cat meme website and it's great but what happens when you decide that you want to turn that computer off because you can't just have your laptop on 24 seven, right? As soon as you turn that laptop off, unfortunately your site will go down with it. So that means that people could only access your website as long as your laptop is on. So that's totally unacceptable, right? Websites these days, obviously is, you know, people wanted to want to see it 24 seven. So it's, that's just the standard of a website. So the obvious like initial, like easy solution to resolve this is to buy a dedicated server so you could go out to like best buy or fries or whatever buy yourself like a server or amazon order it on amazon or whatever and then you set up your server rack you know you load up your um website onto it and then now you host it and it's this because it's a server it's a dedicated server it'll just run forever 24 7 you just have it on and it's great now you feel like you solve all the problems in the world but you know what like your your meme your cat meme generator is so popular that like you know pewdiepie or something he found it and then he made a youtube video on it and now your website is getting so much traffic and it essentially it's getting ddos right um and and it's shutting down people are getting connection errors you know server timeouts so you're like oh man this is crazy like what am i gonna do like do i what what's the best solution to resolve this right because the here's the issue with this particular scenario the really challenging issue is that you because this is like a spike of traffic you don't necessarily know if this spike is gonna continue on after this you know little phase like with viral videos and things like that they have a lifeline like right they have a timeline of how long they are popular so do you what do you do do you just 
shelve the money and buy like you know 10 more servers to support uh, this new traffic um, but what happens when, it, if you do that, what happens with the servers when you don't have any more traffic anymore? So now you'll have all this like hardware that's not really, you know, optimized. It's not really used optimally and there's nothing you could do about it. Now it's just deprecated costs. And, you know, these are the, this is the exact problem that a lot of startups and like just companies in general deal with. And it's, it's not even like small startup problems. It's like large company problems too. You know, every company deals with this type of, do I scale now? Like how much hardware do I get? How do we configure this hardware? And then, you know, so there's all these problems with managing your own hardware. So with that premise, that's what AWS, essentially cloud computing solves. Um, I like to think of AWS and other cloud computing platforms as essentially infrastructure as a service. So they, without you having to buy your hard hardware, you can essentially just go through their portal and then create your own as many instances like virtual boxes as you want. You could create like storage, like simple storage solutions for files. Uh, there's also identity access management systems. So there's like all these things that revolved around running and operating your hardware, but you don't actually own any of the hardware. It's actually incredibly powerful. So one thing that's amazing about AWS is that like me, for example, as a sole developer, as long as I have the money to foot the bill, I could essentially scale like any website to be served in multiple regions with a click of a button. Um, I can make sure that my website scales automatically. So if let's say that like um, out of nowhere I get a spike, I, my system can automatically detect that I'm getting an excess amount of traffic and then it could just, you know, scale up and get a bunch of new instances to serve the payload and then when that's done it could you know shut the machines down and you know that's what they were talking about in terms of like pay as you go model because it's really to optimize the amount of like so aws is really good at doing things like that it's really to optimize just the amount that you're paying for, like uh, uh, basically just pay only the amount that you're using. So that there's a lot of like cost uh, savings and scalable solutions there. Bottom line, all cloud computing is, like the definition of it really is being able to, you know, um, control other computers um, through the network, through the internet essentially, um, to do your bidding. <laughs> Uh, that's all it is and the only reason it's like called cloud computing is because the hardware that you control is not yours it's really the public cloud um, or Amazon's like cloud right so it's like Amazon's cloud or whatever so I hope that explanation was pretty clear uh, let me know in the comments below if I sucked at it <laughs> but that's kind of just my understanding of it and I, I like to create these scenarios and like kind of think about the problem that something solves because then it makes a lot of sense on why I should learn it. Anyways, like I mentioned, I'm gonna be making a bunch of playlists uh, of different uh, Amazon web services. So here's the thing, like, why do I even like make this like abstract, like this high level thing? Be uh, because the, the issue is, it's Amazon Web Services is really complicated. There's a lot to learn. There's so many new services and they're constantly adding to their portfolio. And I mean, like we could just look at the product listings that they offer. So let me, let me quickly go to that. All right, so here's the list. Just to read a few off the top. Uh, compute, storage, databases, migrations, network and content delivery, mobile services, developer tools, management tools, Security identity. So there's a ton of things here, and the the thing is, within each of these bullet points, there's like multiple offerings too, um, and they all have their like own terminologies and things like that. And here's a pragmatic advice: um, when you start working at a company that heavily uses AWS, people will just assume that you know these different services, at least the ones that are like most commonly used. Of course, there's like some of the new ones that will come out where no one knows and it's okay to not know those. But at the same time, like um, you need to know what EC2 is, S3 is, IM is, like all these like common, like just basic stuff about like their most basic product offerings, you just have to know. Or you're gonna sound like a complete noob. Um, 
but yeah, so I, I hope you guys uh, are, are interested in this particular topic because I'm actually like AWS and like just cloud computing in general is, I personally believe is probably the number one skill trait that you could acquire um, in, for the next 10 years or so. Like a lot of people say like machine learning and all this and that, but pragmatically as like a full stack developer, knowing AWS is probably the number one skill on top of your obvious like how to make a website kind of thing, like Node and React and all that stuff. Besides that, AWS is probably king. Now, how do you learn it? There's a few ways to do it. Obviously watch these videos if you want, um, but I, I could give you a few right now. Like. So luckily, all of these um, like cloud providers, such as like AWS, uh, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, 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 I don't know. Um, they all have like certification programs, and they're pretty good. Um, granted, like here's the thing: like getting certified is just studying for a test. But m what I felt personally when I got certified was that after I got certified, I didn't really know how to use any of the services itself but because i took the certifications and I, it forced me to study up on like the high level of every service that was kind of available and it gave me like kind of the confidence to start diving in and then once i started working with it day to day um i was able to pick it up a lot quickly and i was able to you know navigate it a lot quickly and learn faster overall so i would highly recommend you guys to try to get certified and and you know there's there's good ways to do it like um my favorite website for uh studying aws is uh a cloudguru.com or is it uh, i'll just post it on the details and there's also cloud academy that was okay but i, I prefer cloud guru the most um and for Google and Microsoft Azure, I think Kaguru also has lessons. I haven't done them yet. Um, I'm actually planning to get certified for like Google's developer uh, platform this year. Um, maybe next year, depending on how busy I am because I'm moving and things like that. But yeah, it's good to be cloud agnostic and things like that. But you know, I would if you're interested in this topic like cloud computing and getting into it, then I think doing AWS is probably the best bet. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this is, like I said, it's gonna be a playlist and um, the future videos will be me kind of picking one particular service and then doing like somewhat of a deep dive and like giving you guys like a pragmatic like approach. Like So for like S3, for example, you just need to know that it's like a simple storage solution. It's like a file storage. Uh, you could add policies to it to have security. You could, you know, using the CLA, AWS CLI, you should be able to, you know, put things into your buckets and take things out of your buckets and, you know, all the, and you could host like websites, like all these like basic stuff about S3 and why it's such an amazing thing. Um, like I would make that into one whole video and give it the time that it deserves. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.